guys, it's Philip, and this is the second episode of Z Tapes Hangout. And this time I'm welcoming Bird Spotter, a uh, band from our roster. And we are going to be talking to all three members right now. So you will get to know them a little bit more. I have to admit, I'm myself a little bit unsure about the history or the background of this band. So I'm really excited to chat about it. So Maybe the first question is like, who is Bird Sporter? Who are you? Or how did you met? Or how, how did you start the band? Well, we, the three of us all went to college together. Um, so, you know, Nick and I, Nick's got the light unbuttoned shirt on, uh, our brothers. And um, so obviously Nick went to college before me and he and Brayden started a band together there. And then later when I started going to school there, and Nick graduated, Braden and I started playing in bands together. And then after that, the three of us all started a band together uh, when Nick was living in Philadelphia and we were going to school outside of Philadelphia. Yeah, so, and the first, uh, the, first, the first thing we did together was like all old songs that we had written kind of a long time ago and never, um, they'd never been recorded. So then Chris Braden and I and uh, one of our other friends just recorded everything and um, released it. And then things kind of have changed since then, but that that's the core of the group. Cool. So, so did you always play some instrument or was it something that you take interest in high school or how, how that started for you? I think we all kind of took different paths to it. I mean, I started playing guitar when I was like 12, maybe 13, and it's still the only instrument that I really know how to play. I mean, part of what's been fun about this project is that like, we all kind of do a lot of things. Like when, like Nick said, we were playing old songs when we started playing together. And so like, if Nick wrote the song, he would play guitar on the song and I would have to play bass because we needed bass in, this, in the song. And so the band sort of forced me at least to learn how to do more things than I had known how to do before. Um, and I think the same, I think that's only continued like as we started recording without Braden, without having like a drummer there, we had to learn how to make drum tracks and stuff like that. So I feel like, yeah, for me, it was like learn how to play guitar. And then now I've learned how to do other stuff, but I still really only am a guitarist, I think. Yeah. similar. Yeah, for go, ahead, you go ahead, Nick, first. Um, All right, okay. I, <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> okay, so I um I also started playing guitar, but I, I played bass first for a while. And I started in, in probably when I was 13 or, or 12. Um, and I had been playing in bands for pretty much my whole life since then. Well, also um, for you, like Nick had a long period of time when he was in middle school where he was in like a marching band and like a true. percussion unit so he was also like he actually does know how to play the drums a little bit like on one of the songs on the new album nick is actually drumming and he knows how to play the trumpet i don't know how to play the trumpet anymore i used to know <laughs> but you lose some of those things now i i can program midi and i can't play trumpet anymore it's yeah it's really a trade-off Yeah, so for me, it's kind of similar story as well. Uh, I actually, I always kind of wanted to play the drums uh, since I was little, um, but then I never really did until later. I did like some like various little like piano things and stuff that like a lot of kids do. And then I picked up the trumpet because in elementary school, you had to learn another instrument before you could learn the drums with whatever like school program they had. So I played the trumpet first and I liked it. So I stuck with it for a couple of years, but then I gave it up and then I started playing the drums instead in like, that was in like high school that I started. And then just kind of similar track of like playing the drums, joining like a couple bands. But then later I learned how to play some other things too, just for my own edification and like being able to contribute various different things in various musical musical projects. Cool. So so right now, do you do you all have some side projects or is it for now like birds for the main thing? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I have music that I like make on my own, but it's not like, I don't think of it as a side project because I don't really think of it 
in the same way as bird spotter where it's like i'm gonna write a bunch of songs and actually make an album and like finish something with it it's more like like i have a soundcloud that i put demos on as i finish them but it's not really something that i think of i always think of that as like this is me prepping for the next time that we make a bird spotter album i don't really think of it as something that like i would want to do and leave it on its own without touching it with this group it's funny because I think Bird Spotter has become kind of the like long term project that Chris and I are working on and that like we it, we've recorded something every year for the last three years. And I think our like musical goal is just to continue to record and release at least one thing every year, just kind of for as long as we can sustain that. Um, so most of the writing that I do that doesn't like fit into bird spotter just like it, it just kind of feels more like practice like bird spotter is when everything comes together and we actually make something out of whatever we've been doing for the past year yeah i mean it's similar for me i guess as a drummer like it's kind of natural to have some other like more projects on the side as well um just because like somehow as a drummer you're not necessarily doing the bulk of like the initial inception of the song um, and also like a lot of bands need drummers. Uh, so I have, prior to COVID, I had like a couple things going on, but I guess I never thought of them as quite the same way as Bird Spotter, really. Um, and also I have like my own little things that I write, like actually not even really with drums, but like with guitar, or, like, you know, MIDI stuff. Um, but I, I don't really do much with that. I just kind of like, yeah, I think of it more as like practice and stuff like that for, for other things. Cool, cool. And what about the dynamics of, like you being brothers like and creating music is it is it helping you or is it is it a problem for you for me i feel like it was like sometimes i feel like the little brother when we're doing it not in like a bad way necessarily but i just feel like the songs that i write like i always feel like i'm a step behind nick in terms of like like he's been playing guitar longer than I have. He's been in bands longer than I have. He's been writing music longer than I have. So it's easy for me to feel like sometimes, sometimes a good example, a good way to explain this is like, I always feel like when I'm writing songs after we put out an album, I'm like thinking about how I would make this song if I were putting it on the album that we just made. And then I, and I think that sometimes Nick does a little more work towards like pushing to a new idea. And then those two things it, come together to form like, how we make the record but also in like a logistical sense us being brothers is cool because then we live together a lot of the time when we're recording we're like at our parents house and so it's easy for us to like record all day for a week in a row because we're like just living together yeah i think it's funny because it seems like chris's songs are always more popular than my song so i don't know how, <laughs> how he, he gets the idea that he's a step behind me but um i mean it's funny because I think our, like, being brothers, I think that what, what's helpful about it is that, like, we are, like, we, we don't, I don't know how this dynamic developed. We don't really judge each other's work. Like, one of us will, like, bring yeah. a song, and it's just, like, the other person is, like, we're going to get this across the line somehow. We're going to make this good. It's not, like, like, in, we're never, like, you wrote a bad song basically we're always yeah. like how are we going to make this into a good song i mean uh, that's the thing is like a lot of bands i think have multiple songwriters and then kind of implode because it's hard to like sustain multiple people's vision over like a long time and i think for us it's easier because it's like i don't feel any pressure to like accept nick's vision as mine when we're making a song or when we're making a record like i don't really feel like on a song that he wrote like I'm not going to try to overstep my role as a collaborator. Like, and it's cool because it kind of makes it feel like you're in two different bands at once. Like I'm in the band that I write the songs for and then I'm in the band where I like write lead guitar parts and write piano parts and stuff. And so in that, in that sense, it just kind of feels like you relinquish some control, but then you also like gain the profits of collaborating. And what about you, Brayden? Like, is it is it is it a little bit hard for you, like to like, like you know, see that you know they are brothers and you are kind of the third wheel in some way, and <laughs> you know, like not 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 in the sense that uh, 
it, you are extra, but you know, it's always easier to connect with your brother than someone that is outside. And do, do you find it a little bit troubling to kind of bring something into that like kind of uh, unity or collaboration? Not really. I mean, the thing is that like Nick and Chris are two of my best friends, like outside of the fact that they're brothers, you know, uh, and like outside of the fact that we play music together and we've been playing music. Like they're also like friends of mine kind of individually too. And like, I've played music with them individually as well. So when we started making bird spotter songs together, uh, it's like, I don't know. I felt kind of comfortable with each of them individually rather than like coming into a group with them like thinking of them like already as kind of like their own thing and then me like entering it, I guess. So it's never felt that way for me. Um, but I mean, I guess the other part that there's like, I don't know, like, I, I guess I don't really think about the fact that they are brothers that much, but also <laughs> like if I ever do, it's just like, it's just kind of a natural thing, you know, that like these are two friends of mine and they are brothers and I play music with them. Uh, yeah. And it doesn't really go beyond that much more in my, in my head. Yeah, like I think the first when we started playing together as Bird Spotter was like the first time that the three of us ever hung out like a lot together. And so it wasn't just like Brayden was coming into like the dynamic of us being brothers. It was like Nick was getting used to spending time with like the friendship that Brayden and I had built and the same with me and in their relationship. So I think in that sense, it has like, I don't, I don't know. I don't really feel like you're the odd one out or anything. <laughs> It's funny. I also think that like, the kinds of music we write together, there's like a triangle sort of relationship. Like Brayden and I have always written really weird music together that like <laughs> is in weird time signatures and like isn't necessarily that fun to listen to, but it's really fun to play. And then like Brayden and Chris, I feel like you guys have spent a long time writing like very structurally coherent short songs that are like- Yeah, that was like our jam in college. Balanced. We would write a lot of songs that were like, Very simple. A minute and a half long. And it was the same thing for the whole song. It just got like louder or something. And so when we like brought those two things together, I feel like that's how you ended up with sort of some of the stuff that we've written that like, I, I still think my songs are much less structured and much more undisciplined than a lot of the stuff that Chris writes. But it seems like Braden is, it has been able to like bridge those things a little bit, um, which is cool and very helpful for us. Yeah, and I think that's also like another good point too, is that like, I think also like the, so this past album that we worked on all together, the, the one before that, the first one that was on Z tapes, I wasn't really involved in that album. And I think that was also like maybe really good for like Nick and Chris too, to like, kind of like, it felt like there was something that happened there where like, I guess the two of, to, at least from my perspective, it felt like that, that there was something that happened where they got much used to, much more used to like making songs like together without me, I guess. Uh, And so then like when I came back for this most recent album, it felt like there were like kind of all three pieces of the triangle kind of like very connected. Yeah. And I mean, like, to be fair, we haven't gotten to play music, the three of us together in like a year and a half now. Like Braden recorded the drums remotely for Gusty. So it's like we haven't actually gotten to experience what it would be like to play as a band in a while. And I think that having made a garden everywhere you go is like gave us the skills that we needed to to be able to do like the remote collaboration the way that it came out i think without that we probably wouldn't have been able to do it yeah. okay so so how, how did you record the the gusty album like uh, what was the process behind that it was like <laughs> for for like maybe we probably worked on it every day for like three months um it was last summer like as we were in lockdown um And Braden was in Boston while Nick and I were in New Jersey, like outside of Philly. Um, and it was, it started, Nick and I had like, what, four songs, would you say, that we were going to record? Maybe five songs that we had been playing with a band that Braden was not in. We had, it was still like under the name Bird Spotter, but we were playing with a different drummer um, and a different bassist in order to like play shows around Philly. Um, and we had and wanted we to record. recorded we had one session of recording all of these songs with that band and then the next day the covid lockdown started and everyone left philly so chris and i started like completely over in terms of like how are we going to finish these songs that we wrote with this group of people it was kind of weird because we like we had 
over the winter been like, oh, we have a whole album we want to make. And we had like sketched it out and we had sort of planned out sessions with this band. Um, and then we just like completely scrapped that. And so when we started recording again, we were like, we'll just do an EP of the ones that we think we can do well together. And then as we just kept recording, we were like, oh, you know, I actually was working on this song. Maybe we could add that. Like, I think probably six of the songs on Gusty we wrote while it was being recorded, at least in some capacity. Yeah. Cool. And it, it, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say in the same way, like we didn't think that Braden was gonna record drums on it at all until maybe like three weeks before we finished recording. And we had like, Nick had tracked drums for almost all of the songs. And oh, then yeah. Braden was like, oh wait, I can rent some mics. And we had this like phone meeting where we were like, are we really gonna try to re-record all of these <laughs> drum parts so that we can do this? And then we decided to and Braden wound up recording, which was awesome. But it was another thing where it was like, we couldn't have envisioned that when we started making the album. Yeah, it was very last minute. It was like, they would send me, they were sending me all their demos for everything. And they wanted me to play bongos originally, which I mean, I have a <laughs> mic here and like I started recording bongo tracks. Uh, and you know, like, I don't want to say that that was a complete wash, but yeah, it was definitely, I think less successful. Yeah, than none of the made bongos it. are on the album. So that yeah. should whether or not the, it worked. Yeah. Uh, and then I, some type of conversation about me recording uh, like a full drum kit happened i don't even remember how that conversation started uh and then i was just like wait like maybe i actually could do this i have my drum set up in this like room of mine and i could rent some mics and then i looked for a long time to rent some mics and it took me a while and it was like very last minute like a couple days before we needed to like really have the drums down i figured out that i could get some mics and then i i did that whole thing in like a week or something uh, yeah crazy that was like the week where it felt like the album came together. It was like before Braden recorded the drums, all the songs were like, oh, I don't know if this is going to make it across the line. And then we put Braden's drums in and it was like, oh, the album is pretty much done. <laughs> cool. Uh, I, I remember that you, I think you first probably think, I'm not sure because, you know, I don't know who handles the Twitter actually. <laughs> it's both me and Nick. You could be talking to either of us or both of us. <laughs> okay, this is this is confusing for me because I, I never know. Like this is same for, for example, Joy. Uh, they are two uh, brothers as well. So basically I have a group chat with them. So I know who said who uh, uh, or what. So basically I'm not lost there, but you know, when we, talk on Twitter is a little bit different but back to the point like I remember you wrote me that you have a great album for me <laughs> <laughs> that, that I would like it and I, I even after the first listen I was like wow this is so good I was like I, it completely surprised me like how great it was and still to this point like when I get back to it um, it's really great like like how, how did you like what, what, what was the inspiration for the sound or what, what is the kind of like what made you do this or what, what were you looking maybe for with this sound or kind of like whole concept of album? Well, it surprised us too. I think when we listen to it, I'm still like, this is a lot better than it should be. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know how it got to be what it is. Um, I think I mean, I think there are a lot of pieces. I think part of it is that our songwriting changed a lot between the two albums. Like we, on A Garden, we were very much writing songs that were like still like about our experience from our like first person perspective. But I think on this song or on this album, we were kind of like, what if we just told stories about people who are interesting and um, that kind of don't have an immediate like, aren't just about things that we feel in an immediate way. And I think that opened up a lot of really interesting possibilities for us. Um, and I think that we were also like sonically inspired by a wider group of artists than we have been in the past. Um, yeah. Although I think a, a lot of it is Yola Tango <laughs> at base, I think yeah. on, on, on a number of the songs, which we, I mean, Chris and I both love Yola Tango, but we've never managed to like allow that to come into our writing and 
a direct way. Whereas like many of these, the songs on this album are, I think, um, more expansive and atmospheric in a way that we we haven't been able to do before. Yeah, I think so much of it is like, in terms of just how the album sounds, like I wasn't playing an electric guitar at all when I was writing songs for A Garden Everywhere You Go. Like everything I was doing was on an acoustic guitar. And it was like me playing like as quietly as I could in my college room, like singing as softly to myself as I possibly could. And then I, you get like a little more confidence coming into the songwriting for Gusty. So like, because we were playing with that band before we recorded it, like we were playing electric guitars and we were like mm -hmm. a little bit louder. And, and I think that just opens you up to like a different type of expression than we had been open to when we were writing a garden. And then at the same, similar to the electric guitar thing, it's like, instead of wanting to program all the drums, we wanted to use like a drum machine a lot on Gusty. So you have just like a switch in how the percussion kind of comes out. It was a lot of different things where I think it was like how we were writing songs changed, but how we were recording them also changed a lot mm -hmm. because we were just using different tools. Cool. So uh, when you maybe look back now, it's it's been out for a couple of weeks, months. Uh, is it like this is the view on the album shifted for you or do you view you the same or or in general like what do you think of the feedback in, from fans or even maybe your I friends? mean for me like I am like ecstatic at how much people like it like I felt like the response that we got online was like above and beyond what I thought we would get and I continue to have this experience where like people I know who like did not like the bands that I was in in high school and like thought I was stupid for like <laughs> being into that are now like, Oh, your band is cool. Like I like your music. And so that's really surprising to me. Um, yeah. I would, I imagine you guys feel the same way where it's like, we were, we thought it was good when we were making it, but people seem to really like it in a way that's surprised me. I, I would echo that. I think that I've been surprised by how much people like it. And also I think, surprised that I I still think it's good like most of the stuff we make after about six months I'm like I don't know it wasn't as good as it could have been but this feels like we we, we actually made something kind of cool which is really nice yeah same exact thoughts for for me as well just kind of surprised by how much people like it and like especially I guess maybe like my friends and stuff and family you know? yeah I also think like part of that what's to thank for that is just how long we spent recording it like we had that experience of like listening to the set, the songs as we were recording them and thinking they were bad but like it was during the process so we we're able to make the changes to that to mm -hmm. those things as they were happening whereas in the past it's been so much like we've recorded quickly or we've just like not been very critical of ourselves while recording so then when you go to listen to it like six months later you hear lots of things that you didn't hear then so i think it also just we had time Cool. So, uh, like, do you think that the part, you know, the USA where you grow up, like, shape what Birdsport is or what your music, maybe, maybe your music tastes de definitely, but maybe what, what about the band? Like, is it, is it the location where you are born or you were, like, most of your time, like, does it change the music for you or how do you see that? Yeah, I mean, where Nick and I grew up, there's like a really big like pop punk and emo scene that sort of persists to this day. And it's kind of like a lot of it is still taking cues from like almost like early 2000s pop punk, I guess. Um, and that was music that like I was playing when I was in high school and like continued to be into for a little while. And then, I mean, the first Bird Spotter record we made, we were like trying to make an emo album. Like we were trying to do like twinkly guitars and stuff like that, at least in some, in some capacity. And so I think for us, that was like, for me, I should say, that was like the kind of music that I was into and making for a long time. And then I just took like a hard turn away from that and got really into music with like acoustic guitars and like bedroom pop type stuff. Um, and I had always been listening to that a little bit, but like where we were growing up, if you were going to be in a band, it was going to be like a punk band. 
I think I think the for me it's a little bit different in that most of the bands I played in were punk bands. I mean, I was in that scene too. Everyone was playing pop punk for a long time, but kind of until the very end of my high school experience, there was like a large contingent of people playing sort of like very soft prog music. It was kind of like Death Cab for Cutie meets like um, the Fall of Troy or bands like that. Like there were a lot of people who were a few years ahead of me in high school who were playing. I think music was actually really interesting, but then like that was totally like it just disappeared because pop punk music became so big. Like I, it sounds silly, but pop punk is so popular in South Jersey. It like is really, and when we were growing up, like there were these shows that would happen on Sundays, like twice a month that they would start at 3 p.m. and go until 9 p.m. And you, there would just be like six hours of pop punk bands and the show would be full. It was all people from South Jersey. Like it was a pretty, as a kid, I was like, this is just what music is. But now I understand that that's totally absurd. Like that doesn't really happen most places. So I still wonder about like how formative was that for, for me in terms of making music. Was that true for you too, Brayden? That like is pop punk big where you grew up? No, not really. Honestly, when I was uh, when I was growing up, I mean, so I actually grew up in New Jersey as well, but just like a little bit north of of them. Uh, but in my neck of the woods, it was a lot of like metal uh, and stuff, and like a lot of electronic music. Um, but I wasn't. I personally wasn't that connected. I definitely wasn't as connected as like Chris and Nick were uh, with the scene around me when I was um, like in high school. I think. Uh, but that's kind of, it definitely wasn't pop punk nearly to the same extent as uh, I've grown to understand that it is in South Jersey. Yeah. Cool. So uh, you've been talking about like playing shows, like, uh, so do you miss it? <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> be, yeah. Yeah, because last time I, I was talking to Borsha and basically they said that like they don't miss it. They don't miss playing uh, like shows at all, or even just like it's not it. for them. So, so what 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 is what is the like kind of the the one thing? No, maybe one thing, but what is the the thing that you miss the most from the shows? Or I think I I my answer to this might be. I think Chris and I have talked about this, but like Birdspotter has gone through many permutations in terms of its live performance. We've always had, we've played with a lot of different bands. There was a point where like two years into Birdspotter, the same lineup had never played like- More than th two shows maybe. Yeah, like we were always, we were always subbing people out based off of what parts we needed and who was around and like which one of, which of our friends were in the city basically. Um, so now that we actually made this album Gusty that we actually think is good and we could actually perform it and put on a good show with Braden, it like kind of sucks that we can't play shows. Like I finally actually want to show these songs to people and we can't do it. It's sort of ironic. Um, yeah. I think that for me is what, like I don't, I don't love playing shows just to do it, but when I feel like there's something to actually share with people, then I'm pretty excited to do it. Um, so I've been bummed that we haven't been able to like do any live shows around this album yet. It's funny because I, when I watched that video with your interview with, um, with Portia, I was like, everything that they said resonated with me. I also was like, I don't like playing shows for all of these reasons. Cause in the past, I really have not liked playing shows. Like after that sort of punk phase where I was like, shouting a lot and be, and playing really loud music like and I started playing quieter music I totally was disinterested in playing shows because I was like I don't want to go somewhere and have and feel like people are like talking over me and like not really caring about the music that we're making because like I don't want to shove it down people's throats if they don't want to hear it like that's chill with me um it just felt weird to me and I definitely started to feel more like recording music gave me like so many more options to make like a complete song and it gives someone a, a, a lot more options in terms of how to listen to it and how to interact with it. So for a while, I was like super anti playing shows. And then 
the whole process of making Gusty kind of just made me like miss it and want to do it again because I did start to feel like the music we were making could translate to that to that context again in a way that would be satisfying and I don't think I had felt like that like when we were trying to play shows off of the songs that we had written for a garden everywhere you go it's like we had to basically rewrite those songs with the band in order for them to sound like coherent together in a in a live context compared to like all the drum machines and synthesizers and stuff um, that are on the album itself and that always felt kind of it was fun, but also like a little strange to me because I was like, we spent all this time making these songs sound a certain way. And now we're just going to like take them apart completely and build up a new version that I don't think is as good necessarily. Um, it was still fun, but it was like with the band that we were doing it with, it was writing new music. That was really the exciting and fun thing that we got to do. And I feel like now I am really hungry to play shows again because of that. Yeah, I think it's similar for me as well. Uh... I, I mean, my opinion about like playing shows has ranged from like feeling really bad about shows. Like, <laughs> like in the first band that Nick and I played with, it felt like <laughs> yeah. most of the shows, like we left feeling like, man, like that was not a good experience to like really, really enjoying certain shows um, and just feeling like great afterwards uh, to just like kind of a, nah, it was something we did. And so it's not really the show that I miss, like the, the experience of playing the show that I miss as much as it is like, I guess, playing with other people together in the same room. Uh, I really miss that. And I think there is also something to be said for like, when you play a good show and like, you kind of like connect with the other people in your band and with the audience, there's like a certain mm -hmm. level of like, I don't know, there's like a certain level of intimacy there that I really miss. Um, but it can be feel really bad a lot of the time as just like a performative thing and, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think I kind of go back and forth on the actual shows part, but there's aspects to it that I really miss a lot. Yeah, it might be a little bit while before uh, you will be able to play some shows, but what is the future for Bird Spotted right now or for the next month or just next year? Like another album <laughs> or maybe. I mean, we don't really know. Like, I'm writing music. I think Nick's writing music and Brayden's writing music too. We've never recorded a song that Brayden's written, but like, I definitely would. Um, I don't th see why we wouldn't. Um, so, for the future for us, could be anything. I think as soon as Nick and I are in the same place again, we'll probably try to record because that just tends to be like what we do. Whatever, whatever songs we have written, we try to put them down. Um, so that could happen. I don't know if we have plans to play shows because we're all in different places for the foreseeable future, but hopefully. Yeah, I mean, right now we're just writing, writing out this situation that we're in. And hopefully, I think that, you know, a lot really just depends on what is feasible um, in, the, in the next year. We'll definitely record something. I think whether or not we get to play shows depends on a lot of things outside of our control. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the thing to be said, I think, like, on, off of what Nick said before about suddenly, like, it's ironic that, like, suddenly, you know, we put out something that we really like, and, like, we can't really play it together. The, the thing that's kind of, that's not being said there is it's not just because of COVID, but, like, I mean, you know, Nick's it's in Canada like, right now, yeah. I'm in Boston, like, Chris in Hawaii, and, like, we don't, I, I, don't, I certainly don't know when the next time we'll all be in the same places. Um, yeah. Could be a while from now. Uh, so I mean, if it really, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 you go ahead, man. <laughs> I, it feels like, it really feels like if Nick and I weren't brothers, then the likelihood of bird spotter existing in the future would be pretty much like zero. Like, I think that the <laughs> fact that we're bonded for life is what means we're going to keep recording mm -hmm. like a, a record every year, which is kind of cool. Cause it's like, I mean, I shouldn't say kind of cool. It's awesome. It's like really good <laughs> to be part of a project that has, uh, like that much longevity to it because I think for me and for you guys too I'm sure it's like you start so many bands like between the beginning of high school and the end of college I must have started like a dozen bands and it sucks sometimes to put all the energy into that and then to like the semester ends and like someone transfers and it's like well <laughs> yeah that's it uh, now we got to start a new band or something and so I feel like for us the future like we always think of it pretty long term in terms of like what kind of records do we want to be making like five years from now and stuff like that. 
Yeah, so maybe maybe one of the last questions, like what is the like your personal plans? Like I I I I know that you are in different places, so maybe you can test that. Like what what actually what do you do besides the birth quarter or what is your plan for next year? Maybe foreseeable future future. Well, Braden and I are both in graduate school right now. Um, I'll let Braden talk about what he's doing, but I, uh, I'm studying human geography, which is um, uh, kind of a nebulous discipline these days. But I, I, my immediate foreseeable future involves deciding whether or not I'm going to try to do a PhD. I think um, I don't know if I want to be in the academy or not. Um, so there's that's 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 what's on tap for me right now. Um, I'm basically just in Vancouver until next spring. Um, I don't. I have no idea what I'll do after that. Yeah, I mean, so like Nick said, I'm in graduate school as well. Um, I am currently doing a PhD, uh, so I'm kind of stuck here for like several years. Uh, not stuck, but you know, here for several years, I guess. Um, I don't know what happens after that. Uh, so I'm doing my PhD in, in math, which is a very like, you can go in a bunch of different directions after you finish. Um, whereas, you know, like in contrast, as I'm told, at least, if you were to do something in like a lot of humanities disciplines, it's hard to see what you would use your PhD for beyond just like academia. Um, whereas in math, you know, I could go into academia, I could go like do something in like tech or something like that, you know, um, could do something with teaching. And so I really, I haven't even, I mean, I thought about it, but I have no decision in terms of what I want to do after I finish. Um, so I'm just kind of here for the next couple of years doing this. Yeah, and so I'm living uh, at my girlfriend's parents' house in Hawaii right now. Um, and I <laughs> lucky. At, I, lucky. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky. Um, and so I work at a ukulele store and that's like what I've been up to <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> And I'm going to stay here for a while, at least while COVID is still rampaging. Um, and then when I leave here, I'm going to get another job and I don't know what it's going to be yet. So, yeah. So right now I'm just working in the ukulele store and learning how to play the ukulele. So there's going to be ukulele on our next record. I can <laughs> promise that, which will be a surprise and it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, even for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here is the last question. Like, if you would name one band that you think it is worth following right now, or like you kind of really enjoy it, what would it be? Oh, or maybe top three. Give it top three. three. Yeah, or whatever comes to your mind. Like, hmm. I'll, I'll give you my. I'll, I've got two. I've got one that's okay. like current, relatively famous release as a. Buck Meek's album that came out on on Friday is awesome, and anyone who hasn't listened to that should. But um, the the release I'm currently very excited for is the next Swim Camp album. Whenever he decides to actually release that, um, I think that's going to be one of the best like DIY ish albums to come out of Philly in the next year if it actually yeah. comes out this year. So. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about when or how it will come out, but I'm I'm eagerly awaiting yeah. it. Definitely, the Swim Camp album is up there. I that's like a, an album where I always go to find it on Spotify because he he sent it to us when we sent him Gusty, and I it, like I want to hear songs from it, and then I, if I want to listen to it, I have to like go back into our Twitter messages from way back and find the link to his SoundCloud that he sent us or whatever. Um, so definitely that. In terms of Z tape stuff, like I really liked the Port Lucian EP that came out. I don't know if you guys are planning on doing, if there's like a record coming from them, which I would hope so, but I don't know. I already asked no answer yet. So, all right, cool. Yeah, I don't know who I would say. I, I like maybe just because it's on the top of my head, uh, like or like top of my mind right now because of the new album i'd say it's buck meek uh like a lot it's, it's good um i guess i actually i don't i haven't listened to the the swim camp album that has been sent to to chris or nick uh but um i mean i like their previous stuff 
a lot. Um, and maybe bed bugs, another one kind of in the similar type of yeah. type of range that I like a lot. It's in yeah. Boston too. I got to give a shout out to Max Gowan too. I love like oh, every yeah. Max Gowan record that comes out and they seem to come out pretty frequently. So I, yeah, I, I have to know hope how that he does another it. One. <laughs> yeah. They're so good. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I would love to talk to him because <laughs> I think he's not only a music genius, but he's also a mastering genius. And <laughs> like he did the last Pauk album. Oh, yeah. I saw that. And that was, that also, was album really good too. Yeah, we are releasing one surprise, surprise release. <laughs> he is mastering right now. And I'm really excited about that one. And actually, little spoiler alert, it was recorded or Swing Cap uh, helped recording that one. So oh, yeah. that's awesome. So that will be a really good one. So uh, yeah, like I, I, I like everything Max does and I'm still bummed that he's not getting more attention because he deserves like it's he's just great but i think eventually he will be he will be noticed and famous for his stuff yeah okay that was all for me uh i'm really glad we were able to chat all in different parts of the world and yeah that i'm glad that i can have you on label and i'm glad that uh Maybe we will work together on the next one. And I'm I'm really excited about the Gusty. It's it's been one of my favorites from last year and I love really re-listening to it. So it was it was even a pleasure to talk about that album. And I hope we'll meet soon, maybe at Z Types Festival at some point. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> but but I I wish you all all the best and I hope even our Uh, watchers or subscribers like this one and definitely we will bring you more in next episode with other z types artists and thank you for watching this and thank you for any feedback or anything you want to kind of ask the bands or or me afterwards thank you so see you later bye see you later okay cool